This is an intro to a little video series on this compressor. I've had this compressor for over 30 years. It's never had anything done to it. It's always worked. The problem was that in the last few years it just takes a long time to charge up. I measured it the other day and it'll be part of this video series. It took 19 minutes and 55 seconds to go from empty to 135 PSI cutoff point. The reason I'm rebuilding this is that, but also because I'm going to use this compressor to paint this car. I used it before when my son and I painted his car, and it was a small car, probably half the size of this thing, a little, view, uh, a little central, uh, it's on central, and this thing worked its heart out, but it supplied the air to do it. Uh, it was drier too. I have up here, and this will also be part of the series, is testing this thing. Um, I came up with a plan to put an air conditioner compressor out of a large vehicle to take the compressed air out of the compressor, up, go through that condenser, and then back down into the tank through two water traps, one going into the condenser and one coming out of the condenser. I put that thing up there six, maybe seven years ago, I have yet to get a drop of water out of this thing. Now that will also be part of the explanation on this, on this series. But I've had some people comment that my videos take too long, I talk too much, I whine and complain about the guy across the street cutting his grass all the time. I know that's true. I know I do that. But I'm not here to be a, a YouTube star. I'm just an old retired guy having a good time. It's just kind of like the Truman Show. This is part of my adventure towards learning how something works, diagnosing problems, making mistakes, showing mistakes I made. And there's a big one on this one. I had a catastrophic failure, and it'll be part of the series. Um, getting past it, finding out how to measure things, how to diagnose things, how to fix them. And hopefully, through some of my mistakes, if anybody's watching it, they won't make the same mistakes. You can glean through all of the superfluous fluff that I tend to go through. Get the information you need to fix your stuff. So, anyway, sorry that I that I drone on, but just that's my nature. That's where I am in my life. I enjoy it. I enjoy learning how to fix things. I enjoy exercising my mind to do these kinds of things. I thoroughly enjoyed learning how to record videos and learn editor and all that kind of stuff. I don't have any idea how to make successful videos. That's not my goal in life. I'm not getting any income from YouTube. I don't get any income from anybody except my retirement, my savings and whatnot. And I'm perfectly happy with that. If I help somebody, that's why I'm here. This is May 17th or 18th, I'm not sure which. I am prepping this car for paint. I'm stripping as much of the paint off of it in areas that need it stripped off. But one thing I'm going to do is use this compressor. This is an old Sears compressor. I've had this thing well over 30 years. I've been in this house 31 years. I bought that compressor when I lived in the house that we sold when we moved over here where I am now. Um, this is a utilitarian device. I have never done anything to it other than hook that condenser up there that I took out of a, a picture part yard. It came out of a Yukon or a Tahoe or something, something huge. And I put it in there before we painted my son's car about six or seven years ago. You take the water out of the lines and it did a great job oh just for granted I just drained the water out of this thing a few minutes ago and there's nothing there there is absolutely nothing that came out of this thing and this this tank has not been drained in the six or seven years that that thing has been put up there now I do get water up here in these guys now if you notice 
there's a line that comes out of the compressor head that goes up to this water trap go down to this water trap and I think I've got this backwards it actually goes into the bottom of the condenser goes around and comes out of the top of the condenser and it goes through yet another water trap and this one is automatically draining and then it goes down this line into the tank and then there's another water trap right there on the output of the tank I have yet to get a drop of water out of that and nothing came out of the bottom of the tank and this is North Alabama and this we have you know 150 percent humidity 14 months out of the year here so I didn't realize it but when we painted the car I did have an inline filter but this thing has a muffler filter that's supposed to go in that hole right there it's missing I ordered one and I thought well this thing takes a long time to charge up the air so I ordered a rebuild kit to replace the ring and the cylinder and the compressor head and the uh, gaskets <clears throat> now this thing is a uh, see if I can get in there well I'm not gonna let the crap off the wall It's a 919-167-330, 33 gallon, 6 horsepower, oilless compressor. This thing has been a workhorse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the thing up. Uh, there's no air in it. I've got the water drain on there opened up, so I'm going to close that up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the time that it takes this thing to charge up from bone empty to where it shuts off. And I think it shuts off somewhere like around 120 pounds, maybe 125. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't remember. And then I'm going to rebuild that compressor head and run it again and measure the time difference and see if... Uh, Replacing that that cylinder in the ring makes a big difference in the way in the time that it takes this thing to charge up now, It does build plenty of pressure. It builds all the way up to 120 psi and it shuts off But it takes for freaking ever to get there and holy cow this thing is loud So the thing that I didn't realize is with that muffler filter that's not on this one It's just sucking in whatever air there is in the garage and compressing it and putting it in the tank so I'm going to put the filter muffler on it when I put the head back together. That should keep you know, some of the you know, moths and birds and low-flying planes out of the compressor when it builds up pressure. So all of that in preparation for painting this car. thing up, start the timer, and just for grins, I'm going to show the gauges. Nothing in them. I've got to tighten that up.
about 20 minutes to fill that puppy up. See the moisture that's been dripped out of that thing. I caught it last. Let's see. Let's go. Look now. You can see how much moisture these things pull out of the air. This compress that's coming out of that condenser right there. This thing does a remarkable job. Okay, we got a baseline now on what this thing takes to power up. Regulated voltage is set at about 100. The tank shuts off at about 130. this off to keep it from coming back on. It holds air pretty well. I've got a slight air leak right there on that joint on the input. But not much. I think I've got what I need. So next thing we'll do is uh, when the parts come in, this is Saturday, May the 18th, when the parts come in, supposedly Monday on the mail truck, it'll be May 20th, we'll uh, replace the ring and the cylinder and the gaskets in that. I'm also going to clean the reed valves in it and install the muffler and air filter on it. We'll see what kind of a difference that makes. I'm looking forward to it.